Hi everyone, my name is Raphael, I am a UX researcher and walk psychologist and I will be talking today about what your future employer wants you to do and how can future researcher and job seekers leverage that knowledge. So for a quick disclaimer, this presentation was inspired by an article that was published on UX Planet in February. It was called 2021 in Demand Skills for UX Researchers and I wanted to do the same kind of analysis and report, just that I wanted to focus it on game user research instead of general user research. So the data I used came from the Game Research User Experience Job Board, which was created by Steve Bromley. Um, I selected the last three years, so 2019, 2020, and 2021. I exported the, the job post on the 17th of September, and from that selection I could then um, have 97 posts. From these posts, then I, I removed every irrelevant post that I couldn't use. So everything that was about uh, an internship or a PhD position, a professor position, or a job that was more about um, UX design or purely analytics was removed. And also um, job posts that didn't have any description or that had a link that was not working anymore, um, I then had to remove these. So at the end I had 73 posts that I used for the analysis. From these 72 had a, a valid description that I could use for at least some um, analysis. Of course, um, some of these posts have more description than others, but I then used what I could. And the idea is not to um, make any inferences here, but or to see if there are certain trends or patterns um, in the description of these posts and how the the future researcher could use this knowledge. So for the seniority required, um, it is primarily mid position, then followed by senior position, and then finally junior position. So this kind of confirmed the idea that it is not that easy to get into this field as a junior or young graduate. Um, so something that could be a good idea is to first then get some experience as a user researcher in another field and then make a transition because very often in the job description they also mention that um, experience that you might have gotten from another field is also something that they value. For the location then um, two thirds of the posts were from North America and a quarter was from Europe. Uh, this is mainly due to the fact that all the posts were English speaking positions so everything outside of it is almost uh, non-existent. For the job length, um, 63 uh, of the positions were permanent and 5 were contract based. You also had 5 others that didn't clearly mention what was um, the length of it. As for the um, job title, you can see that there is quite a lot of variety here. So, um, obviously, was the most frequent ones are uh, um, everything that is related to um, researcher. So, the most common researcher titles are um, user researcher, UX researcher, and games user researcher. Um, something to be aware of here is um, the different titles that can be used to talk about the same job, um, especially if you are trying to search for job titles online. It might be good to try these different terms and see if you find maybe more results that way because you might be missing on some of these if you can, if you actually only use one of these two to search for jobs. So for the background, you can see that some are more um, common than others, but it also clearly shows that there is a lot of different paths you can take to actually reach a position as a game user researcher. 
So now I'm going to talk a bit more about the job description itself and the different skills and methods it contains. So in terms of skills, you can see that um, communication and collaboration are really key here and are at the top of the list. Um, so just after you have plan and execute, which is um, the idea of being able to run a study from the very beginning to the very end with all the different steps and activities that you might have in between. Then you have the research Im uh, improvement, which is basically the idea of trying to um, improve the current methodologies and processes that uh, you might use uh, in terms of research. And just after you have evangelizing, which is something a bit more um, oriented for senior level, but it is the idea of um, trying to spread the good um, the good word about UX and research and the benefit that it can have on the, the development of games. And at the very bottom of the list, things are less commonly used or asked for. Uh, you can see that there is eye tracking, there is audio visual, visual software, um, developing UX strategy, these type of things. So here it's the same uh, skills again, but it is separated uh, in terms of the seniority level that is uh, asked for in the job post. Um, so there are different things you can see here. Um, first, you can see that communication and collaboration on the very left side are still very important for everyone and for all seniority level. Uh, you have planning and executing, which basically increase more and more with the seniority level. And this is the same um, for evangelizing the benefit of UX and research. And this makes sense since you would have a bit more um, expertise and um, people might listen to you a bit more, the more experience you have in this, in this field in the company. Um, you have the research improvement, which um, is something, as I said, mainly for senior and senior lead. And in terms of senior lead uh, skills, you have also then uh, things that are very specific to their position. So typically leadership or recruiting for the team, um, managing the team, establishing new, uh, new standards, these type of things. But you can also see that uh, juniors have two things that are a bit more specific to their role. So you have um, recruiting for the playtest, so recruiting participant and setting up the lab um, for the same playtest then. So these are two activities that are also um, related to the playtest, not specifically during it, um, but it would be nice as a junior to have a bit of understanding already about these different tasks, what you might have, how it, how it takes place. Um, so you can also show that you understand how it, how it works and all the different steps you need to take before you actually run a playtest. So now about the, the methods, so here it actually just shows that on average per post um, the amount of methods you have mentioned in the description. So you can see that there is quite more for mid and senior positions uh, and less for junior and senior. And so for junior it might just be that uh, recruiters expect, you, um, expect a bit less from you if you're a junior. But for senior lead, um, that is most likely due to the fact that they expect you to have a certain level of expertise in all these methods already. And very often also they just mention um, a certain knowledge in mixed methods without mentioning all the different methods. Uh, so that also reduces the, the occurrence of these different methods in the description. So this is all the uh, occurrence of the different methods in the descriptions. You can see that uh, at the very top you have playtest. Even though you can see that it is only more or less 55%, uh, which is not a lot, but it is also due to the fact that quite some job positions just ask for mixed methods and don't go into a lot of details about the different methods they want you to know. Uh, so it is not really representative of um, the different job and what you would actually do there, but it is more like how often these terms are appearing in this description, I would say. Um, so you can see there's then playtest and survey, uh, statistics, interviews, and then heuristic evaluation. Um, in terms of statistics, 
it is rarely like a hard skill, uh, a hard uh, requirement. Um, so employers um, require you to have a basic knowledge of it, but they don't want you to have a very deep understanding of different statistic methods. It is a basic level that they want you to have. And at the very bottom of the list, you have other things like telemetry, uh, ethnography, diary studies, cut sorting, which are a bit less often mentioned in the, the job descriptions. So here it's the same idea. It's basically the the methods again, but separated in terms of seniority level. And there are also different things you can see here. Um, so for junior, mid, and senior, playtest is still the main uh, and the most frequent, uh, frequently mentioned method uh, in the description. And juniors don't really need to have a lot of experience with statistics, as you can see. And this is the same for analytics, which is really not something they need to really uh, master yet at this point. Um, and there are two things that are more mentioned also for juniors. Um, so this is observation and managing the participant database, which is even though not mentioned that often, just a little bit more than in 10% of the cases, that might be something that as a junior you might have to, to do all these tests that are all around the playtest and organizing it. So that might be good to be familiar with these different things as well and um, know a bit more about these things. There is really three things that is important here for junior researcher. Communication, collaboration and core knowledge. Communication because as a researcher your findings become more actionable and effective only if you communicate them effectively to people who can make these changes. Collaboration because you would have to not only collaborate with other researchers in your team but also with a lot of different teams that might be working on the same game. And a core knowledge of the different methods that are used in games and how the user experience is shaped um, in games. So basically recruiters don't expect you uh, as a junior to master a lot of different methods, but you should be able to show them a good understanding and mastery of this 3C. So show them that you can communicate and collaborate effectively and that you understand how these different methods take place in games and that you have a good understanding of the user experience in video games. So that was it for me. If you want to ask me more questions or you would like to have access to the different um, data and graph that I made, don't hesitate to contact me either via Twitter or LinkedIn. All this is possible thanks to our sponsors, Playtest Cloud, Player Research, Balsamic, Adobe, the book How to Be a Games User Researcher, UX is Fine, Antidote, and Sketch.